Resuming our study in the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 5, Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Where the men went, I know not. Remember, this is Rahab talking. She is protecting the Israelite spies. And she lies for them. And she says, Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. Her lie, regardless of the motive, cannot be called a good thing. A lie is never a good thing. The Bible says that we are not to do evil, that good may come. But remember, Rahab has been a heathen all of her life. She did what she was used to doing. It was sin, which is not good. But her sin does not cancel her faith in God, which is the thing that will save her. Sometimes we are forced, unfortunately. And I know good men disagree with me. Good men say that under no condition she should have ever told a lie. She should, have just, she should have just told the officials that the two Hebrews were there and then trusted God. See, I completely disagree with that. I'm not going to say that the line was good. I've already stated that. It's not good. It's bad. But sometimes it's not always a choice between good and bad. Sometimes it's a choice between bad and worse. And to reveal them would have been terrible. They would have been put to death. It doesn't excuse lying. It's just just reality. Verse 6. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. You say, well, wouldn't someone be suspicious? No, because everyone used to dry their flax on the roof. So this was good thinking by Rahab, but it was still the grace of God that kept the king from searching every square inch of that roof. Verse 7. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan, to the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. So the king's men head out in the direction of the Israelite camp, trying to catch up to the spies who they think are heading home. Meanwhile, they're still up on the roof. Verse 8, And before they were laid down, she came up to them upon the roof. So Rahab fills the spies in on how she just helped them. 9, And she said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Jericho was a fortified city with a pretty good army. But they're all cringing in fear because they know about the God of Israel, and they know that the God of Israel has them in his sights and is about to pull the trigger. 10. She continues, For we have heard, how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And that Red Sea thing happened 40 years earlier. The defeat of the two powerful Amorite kings is recent history, but that Red Sea thing was 40 years earlier. So you put those two things together, Jericho knows that God Almighty was still fighting for Israel. Jericho also know that that me- knows that that means they are doomed. Verse 11. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Why? For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. 
the population of Jericho, including the fighting men, are all depressed. They all know that the God of Israel is the God of the universe. They all know that he gives the earth to whoever he wants, and no one can stop him. And they also know that the Lord is not happy with them. 12. Now therefore I pray you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. She knew that these two Israelites were good men and trustworthy men, or they wouldn't have the one true God on their side. So if they swear that she will be protected, she will believe them. Unless a person is really warped, they know instinctively that if there is a one true God, then he is a good God and he is trustworthy and he rewards others who are that way as well. So Rahab understood this instinctively. 13. She continues, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Rahab is just as concerned for the protection of her family as she is for herself. And she doesn't want to be saved and then leave the rest of her family behind to die. 14, and the men answered her, our life for yours. If you utter not this our business, our life for yours. And it shall be, when the Lord has given us the land, that we, we will deal kindly and truly with you. Our lives for your lives, the spies say. In other words, if we have to die to protect you and your family, then that's what we're going to do. But you will be protected. So she has her answer. Her and her family will be kept safe. God is a God of his word. 15. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall. Rahab must have been a strong woman. And they must have trusted her to let them down easy, too, because she was holding the rope. Verse 16, And she said to them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may you go your way. So, Good advice, good sound advice by Rahab. There was a barren mountain just outside of Jericho. Rahab says, stay there for three days. By then, those who went looking for the two spies would be home, and it would be safe for the spies to head back to the Israelite camp. 17. And the men said to her, We will be blameless of this your oath which you have made us swear. The oath they took was binding. They knew God would hold them accountable for swearing if they didn't follow through. And God has not lowered his standards at all concerning that sort of thing. You're going to take an oath in the name of Jesus or in the name of God, you better keep it. So let's read 17 and 18 together. And the men said to her, We will be blameless. Of this your oath which you have made us swear? Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which you did let down by let, let us down by, and you shall bring your father and your mother and your brethren and all your father's household home to you. So the Israelites, you know, they had been kept safe down in Egypt inside homes which had the Passover lamb's blood on the door. And the people who were inside Rahab's home, which was marked by a scarlet cord, were kept safe as well. See the, collect the connection there? In both cases, people were saved from the wrath of God by the color red. Just as Christians today are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for us on the cross. The Old Testament is filled with pictures of Christ. It all points to him and his work and his shed blood. And, and this is a very clear one. 19. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out 
of the doors of your house into the street. His blood shall be upon his head. And we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. So if anyone leaves Rahab's house during the attack, they do it at their own risk. If they die, it's because they didn't stay in God's place of safety. God has always and in every age provided a place of salvation. But he has always left it up to the individual to go into that place or not. And to stay in that place or not. 20. And if you utter this our business, then we will be free of your oath which you have made us to swear. So if Rahab runs around telling her neighbors to hang a scarlet rope out their window, the deal is off. 21. And that's because they didn't repent. It'd be the same. I mean, if they repented, that'd be a different story. But no one else is interested in repenting. 21. And she said, according to your word, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. So she tied that cord right away, it seems. She didn't waste any time. No one in Jericho is going to think, hey, that cord is a sign. No one's going to pick up on that. Rahab is in league with the Israelites. No one's going to say that. But she's wise. She did it right away. No sense in her putting off her salvation until the last minute. Get it out of the way. Especially since she didn't know the exact day or the hour that the city would be attacked. Better take your business right now while you have the chance to do it. 22. And they went and came to the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So Rahab's plan worked perfectly. It says in verse 23, So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all the things that befell them. So... There was a lot to tell, too. They told Joshua about Rahab. They told Joshua about how they hid on the roof and she protected them, how they hid in the mountains and everything else, including verse 24. And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, for even, the inhabit even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. The battle for the first city in the promised land is over before it even starts. There's no question about the outcome. They have God's promise. And the people who live there even know it. They know. Everybody knows. The people there are scared to death. They're too afraid to fight. The fear of the Lord God of Israel had pretty much paralyzed the, the warriors of Jericho, paralyzed them, both physically and mentally. They're shaking too much to do any fighting. Why they didn't repent, I have no idea. You say, well, they couldn't. Well, yes, they could have. Rahab did. And that's the thing to remember. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Rahab was the only woman in that city who repented, evidently along with her family. And so, they were the only ones who were saved. But if the other ones, in their great fear of the Lord, would have just fallen on their faces and, and started worshiping the one true God, they would have been saved as well. 